So before I start the video, I wanted to note there are some pops and clicks occasionally. It is not this microphone. It is something within my setup. It is not this other device I'm going to talk about called the Cloud Lifter. Um, I got to figure that out, but don't let that influence you on this mic here. Uh, it's a great mic. Right, so I wanted to talk about a couple things today. Um, one is this Shure SM7B. Before we get into it, make sure you jump in there and hit subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell so you know when I put out new content. You've seen this, I'm sure, on many broadcasts. Um, notably, if you're watching a lot of YouTube and you watch the Joe Rogan experience, you'll see he's got the same microphone. This thing has been around forever. It seems like I saw it was 45 years or something. Um, and this was used on the Thriller album, or so they say. It's a very low output mic. You can go online and you can read tons of stuff on it, uh, technical stuff that you know you will probably glaze over like I do. Um, I just want it. I just want it to sound good. I want it to be, um, you know, uh, more of that radio kind of thing. This mic definitely rejects a lot of the outside noise. There's somebody mowing the grass right now. Um, you may hear that come in, but otherwise it's probably fairly quiet. Um, the biggest thing that being a low output mic is that it needs some sort of boost. It works best on spoken word or, you know, voiceovers, things like that. So most people recommend this thing. It's called a cloud lifter. So I'll show it up on the screen right now. So this is called the cloud lifter. And uh, most people that are speaking or in some sort of broadcast are using this to boost that very low output. Um, and this here provides up to 25 decibels of, of clean boost. I think they use some sort of JFET uh, circuit in there. And this is specifically for dynamic mics. So if you've got a phantom powered mic, you don't want to use this at all. Uh, but it goes right in line right before. So you'll plug your mic into one side and out of that, you'll plug into your mixer or your audio interface. So if, if you're looking to uh, up the quality on your broadcast, on your live stream. This is a very versatile mic. They do have, there's an EVRE20, which has been around forever, uh, industry standard. Uh, but I found that from reading a lot that this was the more versatile studio mic. So if you want this, plus you want to be able to mic your guitar cabinets, you want to have something that you can maybe record uh, vocals on, then this is a great mic for it. Now, because it's a low output mic, you're going to need that cloud lifter if you want to do like spoken word or voice stuff. Um, it's fine for, for vocals, and you can always boost that in, in, uh, you know, in post. But if you're speaking and you're trying to boost that level even after the fact, you're going to bring up that noise floor as well, and it's going to all that hiss and everything that's going to come in, especially if you have preamps in your boards or on your interface that, that aren't the greatest then you're going to hear that the more you bring it up. So, um, it, yeah, you don't need a full mixer. As long as you have an audio interface, you can use this mic. You just need to get that cloud lifter. Now, if you want to click that link below in the description, I've got this to purchase on Amazon. It is about 400 bucks. You can sometimes get them for around 350 uh, Also, the cloud lifter is 159 and um, yes, that is an Amazon affiliate account, so I do get a, a small bit of percentage from that, so I'm just being honest with you there. So this SM7 is uh, plugged into an X32 rack mixer, and then from there I've got uh, P16s, which are their personal mixers, so when I've got my headphones on, I'm basically isolated from everything else, and I can control what I hear on there. So in the guitar, I've got plugged in, uh, I've got I've got a Relay G10 here. This is the newer G10S. You know, when I'm playing through here, I've got an Axe FX3 uh, plugged directly into the mixer. So when I play, the audio mic basically just disables. <laughs> things in my way so I'm still trying to get used to this I have it to the side and truthfully I've been watching the Joe Rogan experience seeing how they how their camera angles and so I'm limited you know in my office I've got a very small desk with a big 27 inch iMac screen on here so real estate is really at a premium uh, but it makes it nice if I want to do demos things like this so I'm using this software now uh, called Ecamm Live and I was using uh, OBS in the beginning, but I had a nightmare of a first live stream, 
and uh, trying to bring Skype guests in. So as of right now, that works great. I think when you're bringing in, um, when it's just you streaming, and I do like a lot of the options. It, it really is kind of like whatever your imagination is on OBS. You can go look that up. It's free um, to download. The beauty about Ecamm, well, the not so beauty is that it costs. So I'm paying. If you pay yearly, I think you can get the standard for about $140 a year. If you pay it monthly, like I'm doing just to try it out, it is $15 a month. So the pro version gives you quite a bit more, um, but most of the time I don't need most of those there. There is like a premium support, which would be nice, but you can still email them if you have issues. But there is one important feature that's missing, and that's what they call their virtual webcam. So I've got a mirrorless camera that I use. I can bring that mirrorless camera in to use for the live stream, which is nice. I can get don't have to use the webcams, anything like that. The problem is the Skype guests see my crappy webcam. Well, and then they don't see if I'm trying to share the screen or anything like that with the audience. They don't they can't be brought into the conversation. I do like using a traditional camera. Uh, rather than a camcorder, uh, because you can change lenses out. So, you know, unless you have a video camera that you can have interchangeable lenses, you're limited to that fixed focal length that, that, and, and zooming. And so I can do some different things with uh, lenses. And so I go between a couple different lenses here, the stock 15 to 45 on this mirrorless, and I've got a 50 millimeter that uh, is crazy crazy close so i can't use that and then the most the one i use the most is a wide angle it's an 11 to 22 millimeter and that's what you're seeing right now and speaking of cameras normally like obs will actually require you to have some sort of hdmi capture so elgato makes something called their cam link it looks like a little usb dongle and basically that you'll plug your hdmi in into usb and it recognizes any of those supported cameras as a webcam which is great the problem with that sometimes is some cameras don't support what they call a clean HDMI. If you don't have this clean HDMI, it will basically show everything that your cam your camera shows on the overlay. So if you can turn that stuff off, great. But in my case in particular, I've got a Canon M50 mirrorless, and it has all sorts of stuff on the display. So if I turn that off, when I turn it off, it still has a focus ring. And the only way I can turn that focus ring off is going to manual focus. And I do like the face tracking. If I'm if I'm, if I'm moving around, it's going to track my face, and it's going to, depending on the focus mode I want, and it will actually keep that in that area in focus. So that's pretty important to me. Well, this Ecamm Live will actually utilize the USB port if your camera supports it, and will actually bring video in that way. And you just... There's no time limits, you know, uh, mirrorless DSL cameras, they're, they're limited um, by a law, basically, that they cannot go longer than 29 minutes and 59 seconds, otherwise they're classified as a video camera. So you're basically limited to that 30 minute if you're recording. And with this, I don't have to worry about filling up a memory card, it's just, it's dumping into my hard drive right now as I'm recording it through this software. So if you have some sort of DSL, some sort of mirrorless camera, Bringing those into your webcast or your, your live streaming gives you that ability to use everything on that camera, all your ISO settings, your, um, your, your autofocus, all your stuff, all those manual controls that you wouldn't have otherwise on a webcam. So my next thing here is this stream deck that I have. And basically, it allows you to access any shortcut function inside of your program, or for that matter, on your computer. It can open up apps it can do anything that has a keyboard shortcut for it. In any of these programs, OBS, Ecamm, there's some other ones as well I can't remember off the top of my head, everything in there, whether you're switching to a different camera, what they call scenes and a lot of things, overlays, which can be in lower thirds, things like that, they have some sort of keyboard shortcut to them. You can assign a button and bring in graphics. It can even be animated, GIF, GIF, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can have those in the software and activate those easily. So when you're doing a live stream, you want to you want to concentrate on talking to your guests, and that's the hardest thing is trying to figure out all those keyboard shortcuts and making things look professional. The last thing I want to point out, this one's specific to the M50 as far as for my situation, but there are other cameras that have the same problem. So on the Canon, they have uh, energy saving features, and generally you want to turn those off. You don't want your camera to go to sleep, anything like that, while it's just sitting there, because when you're streaming, you're not recording. I mean, now, you could record if you want, 
to keep everything moving, right? But, you know, you're still limited to that 30 minutes, especially if you're streaming. That's not a good idea. When the display turns off, which on this camera is a maximum of 30 minutes, if that display, I can't disable that completely. If that display shuts off, the camera shuts off. And I mean, I just have to press a button, but I mean, you don't want your screen, your camera just going out during the middle of the stream. There is a workaround. For the Canon specifically, you can use their EOS uh, utility, EOS, whatever you want to call it. This one is version 3. And what that does is it allows remote shooting and all sorts of uh, other features that I'm not really using. But specifically, it will keep your camera display alive. So if you have a Canon camera and you're having this issue and it's just not staying up and you're frustrated, download that utility. You're still going to use the HDMI out, but you're also going to connect the camera to a USB port on the camera and it will keep it awake. So I hope that helps with that issue specifically. I mainly was trying to talk about this SM7B mic, but it turned into my live stream setup. So I hope this has all helped. It's a lot of me rambling on, but it may get you to where you want with your live streams. And this is a work in progress for me. And so um, anyway, happy live streaming and go get this microphone. It's awesome.